Jai Hind, welcome to class of satellite and radar systems. This is the overview course content. In this introductory uh, lecture, we will be talking about basics of satellites, history, types of satellites and capacity allocation. So, first of all, what are satellites? Satellites are basically mirrors in space. So, uh, if we talk about artificial satellites, these are the objects which have been placed into orbit by human. Uh, so, we use the term artificial satellites so that we can distinguish it from natural satellites. A natural satellite to earth is our moon. The basic components of a communication satellite are transmitter and a receiver combination which is called as transponder. Satellite usually orbits around the earth in either circular or elliptical path. Most accepted path is elliptical whereas, there are so, uh, there are exceptions to it as well. That is circular path, which we'll be talking about it later. That geostationary satellites uh, they follow circular path. Satellites they are used for large number of purposes. They are used into military, in civil applications like medical, navigation system, weather forecasting, and research things. So we have uh, multiple applications of a satellite. If we talk about history of satellite communication, what was the first thing that was launched into space? In 1957, the first satellite launched was Sputnik 1. It was launched by USSR. Although this was done to see whether we are capable of placing a satellite into a fixed orbit or not, it did not have any communication capability. Later on in 1958, the first satellite by US which was sent into space was Explorer 1, through which we have heard human voice for the first time using satellite communication. Then the list goes on in 1960, the first communication satellite Eco 1 and then 2 was launched, then Telstar and the first geostationary satellite Syncom was launched in 1963 and the list goes on. For commercial geostationary satellite, we have early bird. Then uh, there are many applications which are used for communication or mobile telephone. So, application, application area of satellite communication include weather satellites, radio and TV broadcast satellites, military applications, navigation, global telephone connections, backbone of global networks, connection for communication in remote places, for global mobile communication. So, satellite is a thing that will provide transcontinental and transoceanic communication. So, there are far from far flung places where we cannot, uh, where cables cannot be laid and we need wireless communication. But we need wireless communication in gigahertz range, then we need mirrors in space. So, satellites fulfill that purpose. So, this uh, with this picture we can show the basic principle or basic working of a satellite. This is our satellite which is uh, suspended in space or which is located in an orbit. So, this is our basic transmitter or the source information and this is our earth station. So, with the help of earth station we enable a particular frequency which is called as uplink frequency that goes into space and satellite catches it and does the necessary alteration that is whether amplification analysis and it down converts that frequency and that goes as downlink this frequency is called downlink with which the satellite communicates with the receiving earth station and from the receiving earth station it goes to desired destination. So, two stations on earth when they want to communicate through radio uh, broadcast, uh, but are too far then we use satellites for the communication. So, these two stations uh, can use satellite as a relay. So, this is also a line of sight communication because here the head of the transmitter we can see 
the head of this transmitter sees the head of the receiver where in this case satellite acts as receiver for this link and head of this transmitter here can see the head of the receiver which in this downlink uh, the receiving earth station act as the receiver. So, this is also called as line of sight communication. So, transponder is the basic unit, uh, it, it is the most important unit of any satellite. It has the combination of a transmitter and a receiver because we can see here it receives from the uh, source information whereas, it, trans it becomes a transmitter for receiving earth station. So, it acts as a transmitter and receiver both. So, some satellites they do have hundreds of transponders. So, what are the role of a transponder? It receives transmit uh, transmissions from earth, it changes signal frequency, it, it amplifies the signal and then it retransmit the signal back to the receiving earth station through downlink. These uplink and downlink these two frequencies are separated from each other, so that these two are distinguishable. And uh, almost every time the downlink frequency is usually lower than the uplink frequency because satellite is a small unit suspended in space. Too much of amplification or increasing the frequency will be a difficult job. Whereas, at earth station uh, we, we are powerful and we can do whatever necessary alteration we may require. So, uplink and downlink frequency these are always separated from each other. Then uh, whenever we uh, study any kind of communication whether it is microwave communication, radar, satellite, there are standards and protocols that needs to be followed. So, uh, these are the basic definition of standards. What are standards? Standards are the agreements that allow connections to be made which are called as protocols. Standards can be simplex or complex, right? Standard specifies that how many bits uh, make up a computer word. So, this uh, this thing we talk when we talk in digital terms. So, there are different definitions for standards and protocols. ITU is uh, the main uh, regulatory body, International Telecommunication Union. In, in 1865, International Telegraph Union has been established to coordinate the telegraph system in 20 European nations. Then, in 1932, a separately formed body the International uh, Radiograph Union merged with Telegraph Union and the overall body was named as ITU. So, till date we are following ITU regulations. So, the CCITT is now called ITUT and CCIR is called ITUR. So, ITU has divided the world into three regions. ITU region 1 consists of uh, all of Africa, Europe, and, uh, and the Middle East and Soviet Union, whereas ITU 2 includes America, Greenland and ocean region adjacent to North and South America. ITU 3 encom encompasses everything else, whatever is left by I, uh, left to be covered by region 1 and 2. There are other standards and regulatory organization as well apart from ITU, uh, which are your ISO, International Standard Organization, IEEE. Uh, IEC, right? Being engineer, we are pretty familiar about these standards and regulatory uh, uh, organizations. Now, let's talk about satellite services. There are various satellite services which uh, we can categorize as uh, followed. We have FSS, fixed satellite services. We have BSS, that is broad uh, broadcast satellite services, and we have MSS, that is mobile satellite services. Uh, basically, we study about these three services and apart from it, we do have radio determination satellite services as well and radio navigation satellite services as well. So, uh, and one, uh, one service is primarily, uh, primarily important to operators of satellite system which is how we manage the communication between different satellites that is inter satellite services. So, uh, the six designated services which are primarily important are uh, categorized as amateur satellite services, earth exploration satellite services, meteorological satellite services, space operation, space research services, meteorology, 
uh, you have uh, standard frequency and time signal satellite services. So let's talk about FSS. This is the oldest form of satellite service. And as the name suggests, fixed satellite services, these are not, uh, uh, th these are not of use when we are in, uh, we are moving. So this is basically used for point-to-point -point communication. So FSS, are, these are intended for television, telephony, and data signals, right? So FSS uh, frequency allocation, the frequency allocation are in C band, KU band, K and KA band. So we'll be talking about frequency bands also in later slides. When we talk about BSS, this is basically used to provide audio and video services directly to end users. So we must have had heard about these HDTVs. These, uh, these services specify orbital slots, frequencies and channels. So they specify interference ratio, minimum power sent. So these are the examples of our BSS. Now MSS, which is your mobile satellite service. So, uh, this delivers the services to user on the go when they are moving. So, these are further categorized as MMSs, that is Maritime Mobile Satellite Service, Aeronautical Mobile Satellite Service, and Land Mobile Satellite Services. So, these were primarily made, uh, uh, made uh, uh, to carry telephone calls, and later on, uh, we have switched to moving time. So they, they are capable of uh, sending highly compressed data. Now if we talk about advantages of satellite communication, there are several advantages. Like I have earlier said, it, pro it, it facilitates trans-oceanic and transcontinental communication. The coverage is uh, greatly enhanced. The capacity is, has been greatly enhanced. The transmission cost of satellite is independent of the distance. Whether we are talking, when we are talking over phone call, whether the uh, receiver or the other person is situated right next to us or is far from us, it is the communication cost is independent of the distance. Then satellite to satellite communication is very precise and higher bandwidths are available for use. So you can accommodate more number of users and there are more applications to it. So if we talk about disadvantages, yes, the initial cost of launching is very high. We, we need to build a satellite. We need to precisely launch the satellite into orbit. The mechanism and kinematics involved is a little difficult and expensive process. So not a single body can do that. Uh, satellite bandwidth is gradually becoming used up. So a particular bandwidth can accommodate fixed number of users. And as, uh, as uh, like I myself use three, four devices at once. So as the population in is increasing and we are becoming technology uh, freak, so we are consuming that bandwidth. So that is one of the limitation. I won't call it as disadvantage, but limitation. There are larger propagation delay. Yes, of course. So these are certain limitations or we can talk uh, call it uh, disadvantages of satellites. <coughs> there are uh, basic factors that are involved in communication systems that uh, satellite communication that is elevation angle. The angle of the horizontal of earth surface uh, to the center line of the satellite transmission beam. So at what angle my satellite is looking? So elevation and azimuthal angles are the two angles that has to be taken into consideration whenever we are launching a satellite and whenever we are exploiting the satellite for, our, uh, for a particular application. So the factors involved are elevation angle and azimuthal angle. Now if we talk about what are the various types of satellites, we have uh, uh, to classify satellites, uh, uh, we do classify it on the basis of orbits uh, where they are launched. So we have low earth orbit, we have medium earth orbit, and we have geostationary earth orbit. That is uh, uh, on the basis of height of the satellite, that is height of the orbit of the satellite, we categorize our satellite communication. So these three, Leo, Mio, and Geo, these three are the basic orbits where we can launch our satellite. Apart from it, there are 
other orbits as well which are called as Molniya orbit, HAPs and we will be talking about various frequency bands as well. So, let us talk about, so starting from geo that is geostationary earth orbit. This orbit we can say among Geo, Mio and Leo is farthest from the center of earth or we can take reference as the surface of earth as well. So, whenever we calculate the distance of the orbit we do calculate it from the cent, uh, uh, sorry surface of earth. So, geostationary orbit um, to launch a satellite into geostationary orbit, the satellites are launched at a height of 35,786 kilometers precisely above the earth surface uh, uh, like it is it and it is along the equator. So, this orbit is a fixed orbit, a very precise and fixed orbit. The reason behind choosing this height will be discussing. As the name suggests geostationary, here the satellite will be rotating with a speed that it appears stable uh, with respect to a particular region of earth that we match the uh, velocity of rotation, uh, velocity of revolution of satellite with the rotation of earth in a way that the satellite always looks at a particular coverage area uh, constantly. So, uh, the satellite appears to be stationary with respect to that region of earth and why do we need such satellites? We have various military applications where we cannot go with the thing that uh, uh, with the rotation of earth or with the uh, uh, velocity of revolution of uh, satellite we lose some period of time where my satellite will not be looking at a particular area. We, we need 24 hour surveillance. Although even these has blind spots as well, but still if I want to match the velocity of revolution of my satellite around my earth with the velocity of rotation of earth such that the particular area which is seen by my satellite must appear to be stationary. Then for that purpose I height uh, a particular height must be attained because there are various fields like gravitational pull, the various forces centripetal and centrifugal forces that are acting uh, in making my satellite move uh, in that particular orbit. These forces comes into existence and to balance out these forces and make that thing possible we need to attain particular height. So, this is that particular height. Objects in uh, geostationary orbit revolve around the earth at a speed with which earth rotates this is mentioned here. So, uh, uh, geostationary satellite uh, geostationary orbit is something which is um, uh, uh, something which is uh, 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 you know uh, uh, that uh, does not ob obeys one of the Kepler's law which states that every path must be elliptical geostationary orbits are circular in nature. This is one of the exception of Kepler's law of planetary motion. So, uh, about the Kepler's law we will be talking that that governs the motion of celestial bodies around earth. So, um, a geostationary satellite's distance from earth gives it uh, a large coverage area almost a fourth of the earth's surface. So, ideally talking three geostationary satellites can provide worldwide coverage right. So, ideally three geostationary satellites can provide worldwide coverage practically we do have more number of satellites in that belt. We have disadvantages this is too far so, signals will be comparatively weak right. Now, let us talk about the low earth orbit, the orbit which is closest to earth surface, the orbit which is closest to earth surface, this is the range of uh, distance from 500 to 1500 kilometers, we do have various belts, we do have various belts uh, uh, above earth surface in the region of 500 kilometers to 1500 kilometers. So, the, the satellites launched into this orbit are called as low earth orbit. 
So, as, as they are closer to earth's surface, their period of revolution will be smaller. They do, they are visible for around 15 to 20 minutes in each pass. A network of LEO satellite is necessary for, um, so a uh, single satellite cannot solve the purpose and we do need network of satellites always. So, if we talk about advantages being closer, it has stronger signal, less delay time. But if we talk about disadvantages, then uh, th their time span is, uh, sorry not time span, the period of revolution is so short. So, single satellite will not fulfill the purpose. We need constellation of satellite, group of satellites. And as they are close to earth surface, there are uh, other factors that will cause the satellite to move uh, uh, f uh, drift from its uh, uh, path that is your atmospheric drag, the gravitational pull. These effects are uh, prominent on your geostationary satellites. Now, if we talk about medium earth orbit, this will somehow appear in between Leo and Geo. So, if we talk about the range, it is approximately 8000 kilometers to 18000 kilometers. All the different books will claim some different uh, height may be from 5000 kilometers to 15 or 10,000 to 20,000 kilometers. So, this is a belt where we can launch our satellite. It has its own advantages. So, these are similar to LEO satellites in functionality, but their period of revolution will somehow be greater than LEO and smaller than GEO. GEO sa a stationary satellite will have a period of 24 hours. Uh, it is a, approximately 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds and um, LEO is of 15 to 20 minutes whereas, a MEO satellite will appear for 2 to 8 hours. So, this has comparatively larger coverage if we compare it with LEO and if we compare it with GEO, it has comparatively lesser coverage. So, uh, a MEO satellite's longer duration of visibility and wider footprint means fewer satellites are needed in a MEO network than LEO network. If we talk about the disadvantages, it has uh, comparatively longer time delay and weaker signal. Longer time delay as compared to LEO and weaker signal as compared to LEO, although some somewhere in middle between LEO and GEO. So, there are other orbits as well like we have Molnia orbit satellites, these are used by Russia for decades. Now, Molnia orbit is basically an elliptical orbit, the satellite remains in nearly a fixed position relative to earth for 8 hours. A series of Molnia satellite can act as geo satellite, these are useful in near polar regions as well. There are other orbits like high altitude platform HAPs. These are the newest ideas in satellite communication. You know a blimp or plane around 20 kilometers above the earth surface is used, is used for it, is used as a satellite. HAPs would have a smaller coverage area, but would have a comparatively strong signal. These are cheaper to put in position, but would require a lot of, uh, you know, them in a network. We need them in network. A single satellite won't fulfill the purpose. Now let's talk about the frequency bands. With these are very important frequency bands which are used in our satellite communication. We have L band, S band, C, X, K under, and this is K above. We can see the f uh, 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 the frequency values for L band. It is one to two gigahertz, and they are mostly used by uh, uh, mobile satellite services. We have S band. C band is four to eight mostly used. C band is mostly used. We have X band, K under, and K above band. This is something very important that frequent. Frequency bands are something very important about satellite communication. So, frequency bands are something of very much important, uh, um, uh, very much importance in satellite communication. C band is mostly used and that is it for today. Thank you.